How do you respond when a parent asks you how they can best help their child with mathematics from the home? The first priority is to get a culture of board gaming into the home. And that's because board games are a celebration of problem solving. And problem solving is at the heart of a quality mathematics education. A well-designed game is experiential art. If the only games that you have in your home are Risk and Monopoly, that's the equivalent of your home library being stocked only with Harlequin romances. You can do better than that. Risk and Monopoly have advertising power behind them, but that does not mean that they are quality games. You should also avoid educational games. Most of them are painful to play. If the game is fun to play, it's going to be played more, and that's really what you want. The mathematics might be hidden, but I guarantee you that it will be there. Remember, the most important thing is not the acquisition of skills like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. The most important thing is problem solving and bringing that into the home. Computer games are an alternate way to get that into the home. But I like the social interaction of face-to-face -face combat across the table. This video will recommend some games for ages 8 and above. If you thought the choices were difficult for ages 12 and above, these are the choices for ages 8 and above, and they're tough. I'm going to split it up into two parts. First part is for games that have a little bit more mathematical feel. The first choice is For Sale. That's great for students in grade 2 and grade 3 working with money. Lost Cities. Great for students working with multiplication. Stone Age. Great for students learning division. On this side, we have games that are more economical. Citadels, a very cheap card game that has a lot of gameplay. Carcassonne, a tile-based game with an enormous amount of gameplay and a lot of fans out there. Mr. Jack, the best deductive strategy game that I've found. Now, Mr. Jack is a two-player game, as is Lost Cities. Stone Age and For Sale, Citadels and Carcassonne can be played with more people. I love it whenever a game takes pride in its artwork, and that's certainly true of the game Stone Age. The mathematical part of Stone Age comes whenever you're assigning your meeple to the game board on every turn. Meeple is what we call people in gamees. <laughs> so if you hear me call them meeple, you'll know that they're really just people. You've got five of these meeple in your clan, and you have to assign them to the game board. Let's say that I assign all five to go and get timber. Then I roll five dice, because I've got all five here. I've got, I'm going to roll five dice, I'm going to add up the result, and I'm going to divide by three and round down. That's how much timber I get. If I went over here and looked for clay instead, I divide by four and round down. For stone, divide by five and round down. For gold, divide by six and round down. There's a lot of fun stuff too. For example, you could put two people in a shack over here, and the next turn you're going to get a baby, so your clan grows to size six. It's a really fun game. It plays really well, and please don't tell your children that this is a good way to learn division. It's a good game. That's why you're playing it. Lost Cities is an elegant two-player card game that you can recommend to parents. In the game, you have five possible Lost Cities that you can decide to pursue in your explorations. Once you start an exploration, you're immediately penalized, minus 20 points but then you start to play positive points. So for example, here, I've got to 14 points. 
you have to play points in order. So I had to play the 5 before I played the 9. It's my turn. I can play a 10. So now I'm making points on this adventure. I've got to 24 points. 24 minus 20. I'm making 4 points overall on this adventure. You can also choose before you play any number cards to play a handshake card. That will double your profits and your losses in that adventure. A beautiful game. Highly recommended. Two thumbs way up. Citadels is an inexpensive game that you can recommend to parents. In the game, you get to construct buildings. Whenever you've constructed eight of them, then the game is ended. Here are two buildings that I'm thinking of constructing this turn. I only have three gold, so the only building that I can construct is the manor. I can't construct the castle because it costs four gold. So I'm going to put the manor here. I'm going to pay three gold. What makes the game fresh and exciting is that each turn you secretly get to choose a character. So this turn I chose to be the merchant, and that gives me a little bit more money. My opponent over here chose the assassin. That means that they get to guess who I have chosen, and if they guess correctly, then I don't even get my turn. They guessed incorrectly, so I got my turn. Carcassonne is a great little tile game to recommend for parents. Each turn, you pick up a tile and you get to play it. So where is this one? Well, I have to match up uh, the rivers, so I could play it here. And then I'm going to play my piece on there to score three points. There's many different ways to score in this game. I'm not going to go into it all here. Uh, but basically you can score for being the person in a forest. The larger the forest, the better. You can score by hunting deer or mammoth. You can score by fishing. Many different ways to score. I've got the hunting and gathering version of Carcassonne. There's other versions that are just as good. Mr. Jack is based in London. There are eight characters. Seven of them are good, and one of them is bad. But the good characters don't know which is the bad character, and that's where the excitement comes in. So the player who plays evil, they have to uh, try to escape London. The player who plays good has to try to catch them before they can do that. Last month I was asked by a parent what I would recommend for a child who is addicted to violent computer games. Let's face it, half of us have got too much testosterone. This is not an unusual problem. The solution for me was to tell the person, I think that you shouldn't remove the violence. That's part of being a man. Instead, you should put that violence in context. Find a board game that offers a historic simulation of a battle. I have two recommendations. The first, Memoir 44, a fantastic historic simulation of the D-Day landings in Normandy. Second, Axis and Allies. There's a lot of Axis and Allies games out there, and they're all really good. They just offer different theaters for war. This is the board for Memoir 44. You have to set it up prior to playing, and you have to set it up um, with one of 16 different scenarios. These scenarios come from around the time of the D-Day landings in World War II. This game of Axis and Allies takes place over the whole world, but you can choose instead to buy a game that focuses on the Pacific Theatre alone, or Eastern Europe alone, so you've got some choices. I play both of these games with my six-year-old, but they're recommended for ages eight and above. All of the games that we've discussed up till now blend luck and strategy. Now let's talk about games that are only strategic. Games like chess and go and checkers. There's no dice rolling, there's no choosing cards. These are games that are purely strategic. 
I'm just going to recommend one, and that's Devon by the greatest pure strategy game designer ever, Chris Broom. Here's a typical game of Devon. Black is in control of more pieces, but white is closer to these very important red pieces. If you get separated from the red pieces, then those stacks are removed from the game. After you're finished the game, you just stack up your pieces. There's the black stacks and the white stacks, and black clearly won this game.